Oh, wow. You are listening to episode number 70 of the Fitlandia podcast. Today, my guest is Kate Kelly, and she is offering up a really powerful story of transformation. Uh, Kate and I met not too long ago, and she quickly became one of the most inspiring people I've ever connected with on her journey. She and I share so many similarities. So if any of you listening to this are struggling with a reliance on alcohol in particular, you definitely want to tune into this episode. And what I would really love um, is to just give a shout out to Kate for her vulnerability in this episode and invite you all to leave us a rating and review on what you got out of it, because I know you are going to get so much inspiration from today's show. So let's get started. You're listening to the Fitlandia podcast, and I'm Krista King, certified hypnotherapist, nutritional therapist, and your host for the show. Subscribe to the podcast today and join me each week as I bring you experts in nutrition, exercise, and mindset mastery. Together, we'll keep you educated and motivated to live the healthiest version of you. Okay, let's get started with today's show. Fitlandians, welcome back to this episode of the podcast. I know you are going to be so thrilled with today's episode because we have another story of transformation. But what makes this special is it's a story of in transformation. And today I have with me the lovely, beautiful Kate Kelly. Kate, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. I can't even tell you. Woo. So I have to say, like, you have just made my heart so full. We we finally connected. Well, like, when did we first finally connect? A week ago, maybe 10 days ago? Not long. Yeah, we I tried to connect, but I had one of those Facebook clusters where <laughs> I used an old email address that's attached to Facebook and I couldn't get into your group. And Dr. Jerome Craig kept saying, you've got to connect with Krista. You've got to connect with her. So finally I reached out again and I, in fact, I changed my Facebook email just so I could get to you. So <laughs> that's how much I wanted to be in touch with you. Um, oh, that's yes. amazing. Well, it's been magical getting to know you since we've connected. Um, and what I'm really excited about in this episode, as you know, from being a regular podcast listener, yes. um, I love the stories of transformation. I think they're some of the most powerful things. But what I really, really admire about you is where you are in your journey, your openness, your vulnerability. And I know that's really going to bring a lot of validation and hope and excitement for everyone that's listening that's on their own journey. Yes, thank you. I can tell you, listening to you and your journey has been so significant in mine. Seriously, I feel like this time, this journey I'm on is different. It's yeah. different in a several ways. And part of it is connecting with you, connecting with several other people who are now my tribe in this journey. And so many, like we've talked about, so many things that you've discussed, it was as if it was coming out of my own mouth. I would be listening to you while I'm walking the track around my house, near my house, thinking, oh my gosh, that's going to be me in a year or two talking. Yes. So many different things. So your story has motivated me so much and helped me so, so much. Oh, well, that is like literally why I am I do what I do because, you know, I feel like I've unlocked the secret to ending dieting. And so- yes being able mm -hmm. to share that like really openly. Right. I think that's yes. why you connected with my story. Cause I'm super open about my reliance on sugar, alcohol. refined carbs and alcohol, right. Especially red wine. wine. I red know you and wine. I talk all about that, that red oh wine. Oh my gosh. And instead of red <laughs> wine today, we're drinking our herbal tea. I know, for those <laughs> Cheers. <of you. laughs> for those of you that are like tuning into the video of this, um, yeah, right. Clink, clink. We yes. are enjoying our herbal teas today. And I love that. So I am, I'm humbled. Um, and I'm, so, I'm just so grateful that my story resonated within you. And 
um, is supporting you and all these things coming together for you. 100%. To really, yeah. I, what I love, so I'm going to tell a story that you shared with me last week. Um, that I absolutely loved because I totally related to this. And as people are Yay. listening, they're going to be like, oh, my gosh, these two are disgusting. Like, oh, no, my, no. I love you. No, I love you more. No, you're the best. No, you're the best. Because no. that's literally how Kate and I have been relating to each other since yes. the moment that we met. But you said oh. something last week. So at the know, Athleta like, book signing. No, even before that. Oh, okay, over email. Yes, Got it. over email, okay. where you shared with me that you, because I, I've been talking about how I'm taking a break from alcohol for six months, because I felt like this last fall, I was starting to my relationship with it, with it was starting to go back to where it was. In, yes, in, in 2014, before I gave it up for a year. So I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? And, and thank God, like I've, I've done all these things in my life to say, okay, it's time to take a break. I feel like it's going in a direction that I don't want it to. Absolutely. So let me set that six months. And you said, so, said something so cool. Um, and I, I can, I know I'm quoting it cause I can remember it cause it's etched in my mind that you are taking a break from it too. And unlike other times where it might've been difficult, wild horses couldn't yes. make you drink right now. Exactly. You couldn't pay me a thousand dollars to have a glass of wine. It's I'm I've I've given up wine for a couple of weeks here and there. Of course, during the time I was pregnant with my son Jack, but other than that, I've done I've done Whole Thirty. Well, very similar programs, the Clean program, twenty eight day program, and I've given up alcohol for that time. But I have been pissed about it and comparing myself to other people who quote unquote, get to drink and be thin, get to drink in X, Y, and Z. And even this past October, I made a really firm goal for myself to go 10 days without alcohol out of 30. And no, I'm sorry, it was 15 days out of 30. And I made it 12. And that was so freaking hard for me. And then I made a goal in December to have 10 days alcohol free and I had one and it was just getting to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't control it when I wanted to. And I have, I have so much to say about it, but for some reason right now, a flip has completely switched for me and I'm not looking at it as a negative. I don't get to do this. I don't get to enjoy wine like everybody else. I'm thinking, wow, I'm taking a break. I love that phrase. You're the one who introduced me to that phrase in regards to wine. I don't have to give up my beloved red wine forever, but what I know now is I am taking a break and I'm doing it because I want to. And I'm doing it for my mental health, my physical health, my motivation, so many things. And it's easy right (laughs) now. It's easy. It's never been easy to even, there were times where I couldn't even go a day. I would be like four o'clock and I was just waiting to open that bottle of wine. I, and I can't put my finger on exactly what it is, but a lot of it is you and my work with Dr. Jerome and where I work with my therapist, but I am not drinking in January. And you know what? I might extend it past that. I don't know. Hearing you talk about giving it up for a year when I know how similar our cravings and that cycle is, I use it to celebrate. I use it to grieve. I use it for social reasons. I use it to mass. There's so many things that I associate with it, but I'm ready I am ready. And I'm going to be quiet now because you can ask me questions. I'll just keep rambling. <laughs> I was actually thinking I'm just handing the show over to you. Because, no, no, no. You are so inspiring. Um, everything coming out of your mouth. And this is what I've loved since the moment we've connected is you, I, you and I are soul sisters. Totally. We are spirit <laughs> sisters. We are yes. on this journey together. And You know, I think what's really amazing is you might not be able to pinpoint exactly what flipped that switch. Mm -hmm. Um, But my like intuitive sense is that Mm -hmm. there were enough seeds planted Mm -hmm. that it just kind of the energy supported it and and everything started showing up for you to say now's the time. Yes, I agree. I have to also be transparent in that I struggle with depression and anxiety and I see a therapist and 
2017 was a very, very tragic year for my family. I went through a, a lot of loss and grief and um, it was really hard and my drinking became more and more and more noticeable and the effect it had on my mood and my mental health and all of that was pretty destructive. Yeah. And it just, you know, you're so sad and, and, or depressed. And so you have a couple of glasses of wine and you feel better in the moment. And then in the morning you have no energy and you have you're well less, at least me, I'm speaking from my situation. There's just a cloud over my head yes. and I'm sad and I don't have the motivation I have. I literally looking at myself four weeks ago to today, it is so different. I have so much more energy. I'm so much more optimistic, so much more productive. And it's, I know there's a direct correlation between my alcohol consumption and these sorts of things. And I almost want to tell myself, you're allergic to wine. (laughs) I don't know if that's true. So here's what, here's my thought on that, right? Just in the people that I've worked with and, and my own experience, especially for regular alcohol users, I don't think we realize how much of a fog it does create until we give it up. Absolutely. So so for those of you listening, um, if you're like, oh, no, I can totally polish a bottle of wine and be fine the next day. I think that was one of the biggest awarenesses that I got in 2015 was being able to see how much further I got in my business, how much uh, more aware I got of my real emotions and the stuff Mm -hmm. that I had unresolved trauma, right? All of that starts to come to the surface. But the energy that I had in the morning, not feeling like crap, mm-hmm. like I re- and I and this is so like I know you can relate absolutely. to this absolutely yes. Like I would wake up feeling like, let's just curse. All right, we're Dark. just we're just gonna do it. I would wake shit. up feeling like Total shit fit. in the morning. Yes, yes. And I would be like, oh my god, I'm not drinking tonight. And it totally. didn't matter. No, it didn't no. matter. No. Nope. Four, five, six, seven o'clock rolled around. Oh. And it was unavoidable. Absolutely. Cooking dinner. I love to open a bottle of wine and let it breathe and have a glass while I'm cooking and then have a glass with my family when we have dinner and then have a glass when I put my son after while my husband's putting my son to bed. And then that's three glasses. And then I might as well polish the bottle because I'm not going to drink tomorrow. Right. Right. (laughs) And that's like, oh my gosh. And with me, it got to the point where I wasn't even admit. And honestly, I could drink four, five, four glasses. I don't know. Are we going to call a bottle four and a half glasses or is it five glasses? Uh, Well, the way I pour it, four. (laughs) Exactly. I think technically it's like four and a half, but who's counting, right? Right. (laughs) Um, I hate it too when I go to a nice restaurant and they pour me quote unquote a glass of wine and I'm like, wait a minute, that's not a glass. That's like a half of a glass. You're charging me $12 right, for that this thing. That's not how I do it at home. Oh folks. my gosh. No, <laughs> totally. So, oh my goodness, I lost my train. Oh, for me, it was to the point where, you know, I'd have three glasses of wine and, or maybe even a bottle. But the next day, I would feel okay. I wouldn't have a splitting headache. Uh-huh, I wouldn't, uh-huh. I'd feel kind of de- dehydrated and not feel great. My sleep was okay. But I was sort of tricking myself into thinking, oh, I feel fine. I can handle it. I'm not a small person. I eat healthy. I eat lots of protein, lots of veggies. It's okay somehow. But then when I remove it, I literally feel so much more energetic. Yeah. Like probably I should have always been feeling. Also, I want to say I'm on day 11 of no alcohol. So I'm not where you are as far as I can't speak to being a year into the process. And I, (laughs) so people who are listening who know me well, yeah, don't judge me too harshly if in February I'm drinking again, but it's, it's my journey. This, at least to be able to know that I do have some control now. I do. And I can tackle this. I don't want it to get worse and worse and worse over the years. Yes. I I think you just said some, you said two things that are really beautiful. One is it is your journey and it's your journey alone. And for everyone listening, it is your journey. If one day without alcohol is an accomplishment for you, do it and and own that and embrace it without any judgment or comparison. Mm -hmm. I've really been talking 
a lot lately about the pitfalls of comparing ourselves to others. Like I, oh. I did in my live Facebook video this morning. Yes. Yes. Like just how important it is to honor where we are on our journey. Mm-hmm. So, so that's the first thing. The other thing is too, right. We're all on a, on a different scale of what, whether it's a reliance or a dependence or full on alcoholism and addiction, you know, mm-hmm. all the different labels that come with that. And that's why I love this conversation that we're having. Let's mm-hmm. break the stigma to it. Cause totally. I'm, I'm watching every mom out there and I'm, yes. not, I'm not a mother of kids, but I'm watching every mom posting the memes of the mm-hmm. drinking wine. And oh my the, gosh. And like, right. We're all like, we're not talking about. Right. How challenging our lives are and how mm-hmm. we're just like grasping to manage in the day. Yes. And, and really, yes. that's, that's where my, I, and I'm an indulger. I mean, I am a partier mm-hmm. I, and I am on or off. I'm either sleeping mm-hmm. or I'm going. Mm-hmm. And so how that shows up in, with consuming alcohol for me, I have to be really careful. Yes, absolutely. And, and absolutely. I need to be aware of my triggers. I need to be aware mm-hmm. of my mood. I need to be aware of how I've been nourishing myself mm-hmm. through sleep, through good food, all those things, because it can easily turn into a habit for me. Absolutely. Totally. Even yesterday, I was... Um, it's There's a really amazing app called Marco Polo. I don't know if you're aware of it, but it's kind of like... It's, it's a video chat sort of thing. And it's, it's an amazing way to keep in touch with people, even out of town. But I was chatting with a very long term friend whom I love. Hi, Holly. And she said, I shared with her that I was going to be on the show. And she said, Oh, you know, I just had to really watch my consumption as well. Because in doing research, more than seven drinks a week, and you're considered a heavy drinker as a woman. And it was it was it's shocking, because who, how many of my friends or family members and drink less than seven glasses per week. Um, Not very many. I know. And right? right. And this is what you and I were talking about at Athleta. Yes. Um, was this like, that's what, why I was in denial for yes. so long. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll talk about the five stages of grief in a moment. Cause you brought up another one, which is anger, but I was in denial for so long. Like, no, I'm fine. I don't drink any more than, I would say anybody else. Yeah. Not, probably somewhere between 75 to 90% of my friends. Mm-hmm. So I don't have a, I don't have a problem with alcohol. Totally. But you know, it's a problem when you wake up with the intention mm-hmm. of, I don't want any today and here's why. And then you mm-hmm. find yourself doing it. And that's when I like, that's how the seed was planting with me. And then when, yes. I, when I was going through my nutritional therapy program at the end of 2014, and mm-hmm. I started to understand about gut dysbiosis and how mm-hmm. uh, bad bacteria and overgrowth of bad bacteria Mm -hmm. can send craving messages to the brain for sugar, refined carbs and alcohol. That's when I started putting it all together. And my mom passed away in September of that year. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I am headed down this path. Mm -hmm. And completely. And I no, I need to live past 67 years old. I, yep. I have I have plans for this lifetime. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Totally. So all of that together, right, is what mm-hmm. what those were the seeds that were planting over time before it finally becomes the oh I need to I, I need to do this. Yes, and I too. I'm sure that we all have. I, I know you speak about this in the amazing Fitlandia community. We have individualized bodies and metabolisms and microbiome and everything. (laughs) And I've gotten to the place where I would be hardcore paleo, working out, weightlifting, jogging five days a week, granted not doing half marathons, but I could do three or four miles. And then I'd work out with heavy weights. Um, I was in Holland for two years with my family for my husband's job. And I was able to work out a ton and eat clean and healthy and chicken breast and broccoli and sweet potato. And I literally stalled. I could not get below a certain weight. And the what I didn't, I wasn't able to give up the wine at that point. Yeah. I was fitting it in my macros, but I couldn't really give it up for more than a couple of days. So I'm sort of 
in my journey, I am like dead set on getting rid of this last 20 pounds. And part of that is, okay, I'm actually willing right now to look at the wine. I know with my body, I just can feel it slowing my system down. Yeah. Now maybe there's science or not, you know, but everybody's different. And <laughs> also I had my weekly check-in on the phone with Dr. Jerome today. Shout out to him, by the way, he is totally an amazing. If anyone's looking for a functional yes. medicine doctor yes. in Portland, please check him out. Not drinking, I think prevents me from any cravings too. Yes. Cause right. So alcohol. Yes. Yeah. So talk about the craving cycle. Yes. Oh, and <laughs> so, yeah. And I think you and I had talked about this as well. So I, um, like my go-to when I think about sugar, refined carbs or alcohol, right? We all have our fun little trigger Food, yes. or food or drink. And for me, it's wine. Mm. I can let go of donuts, cookies, cakes, and I love it all. But I, yes. don't, I don't crave it until right. I have the wine. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, get me a donut, mm -hmm. get me the cheddar popcorn, get ah, me, ah. you know, all the, all the crap. Just yeah. get it all in there once I'm drinking wine. And of course, as we all know, wine reduces inhibitions and changes mm -hmm. our judgment in the moment. We're like, ah, oh, screw it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think one of the, the tips that I can give everyone listening and remind me to come back to pros and cons list and your why, if I forget, because, yes. you know, yes. I talk a lot about that. But um, I, I really started to I, I'm inviting everyone to look at what is your trigger food? Mm -hmm. Whether it's, oh man, I just, I just painted my bathroom, which is a new awareness for me that hard work equals let's drink. Um, yes. Yay. I just painted my bathroom. What is it you're craving? Or yay. I just got a promotion. Totally. What is your, what is your go to trigger food? Or when you get really stressed, what is your go to trigger food? Because, and I want to say it's Tim Ferriss. I hope I'm getting this right. Mm -hmm. That Tim Ferriss talks about these domino foods, right? Like this, this one thing, this one primary thing that triggers the domino effect of you engaging in the other things that you might not have, you might not like you could pass up normally, but once you have that one trigger food, you can't mm -hmm. pass up the rest. Mm -hmm. Um, So really inviting everyone to look at that. And for me, it's, it's all about the red wine. Totally. <laughs> for me, it's a glass of red wine. I, I actually, I don't keep junk in my house because I can't. I don't want it. And I, yeah. I, I'm not that strong. So I'm really good about not having stuff around, but my trigger food when I drink wine is more wine. Yeah. <laughs> I can't just have one or maybe two small glasses. I, it leads me to want more and more and more. And totally. I wish, you know, my therapist over the last several months kept proposing, why don't you just have one or two glasses? Yeah. And I'd rather almost have zero than one glass. It just like wets my whistle. <laughs> I totally get that. And I so appreciate that you brought that up because I think that is a really honest thing to share. Mm -hmm. um, it is rare. And I'm talking rare, like maybe one out of 20, 30 times mm -hmm. that I will just have one drink. Mm -hmm. And I bet you can relate to this. I can feel in my body. Like I could tell you today, I could not have one drink and stop at one drink, but I can feel in my body at my core. Oh yes. I can actually have just one drink right now. Yeah. It's very rare, mm -hmm. but I can tell when I can only have one drink. Cause I've started to really make that mind body connection mm -hmm. over the years and the work that I'm doing and, and all the research mm -hmm. that I'm doing really coming out of my head into my body, I can tell. And, Good. and I'm pointing at it, right? I'm pointing at, um, for those of mm -hmm. you that are watching, I'm pointing just below my rib cage into my, into my upper belly. Like this is where I have to take a deep breath just because like the anxiety of talking about not drinking. If mm -hmm. I had a glass of wine right now, I'd have two, three, four, oh five, my gosh, five drinks right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. But when that isn't there, and I'm in a calm, present state, I am, I'm literally conscious of, I could have just one glass right now. And I do just have one glass. Um, Good. But, but that's right. That's, that's so because you're so far ahead on the journey. I could not do that. My best friends can all do that. 
I think one of my friends, we were out at lunch and I wasn't drinking and my other friend wasn't drinking. And she's like, Oh, I'm not going to have a glass and I don't drink alone. And I was like, what? I do. <laughs> I, I drink alone. I drink with people. The more right. the merrier. Like I don't have stipulations around it like that. I, yeah. she just kind of has this standard that she doesn't drink alone, you yeah. know? And I also, those same friends can have one drink, two drinks. I will get there someday. Mark my words. Well, yeah. or maybe, maybe I won't, but I am, I will do whatever it takes to get to the place where I can be moderate. If I'm thinking down the road, six months, a year from now, my goal is to be a quote unquote moderate drinker or less, which means seven glasses a week or less. I can save and have two or three on one weekend night. And then, you know, almost like a calorie allotment or a macro allotment, you get to choose how you spend it. And I just want to be able to exercise that sort of control that I haven't been able to for the last 10 years. Yeah. And for you and everyone listening, like we talked about this individual journey, this process of these desires of, I want to still have this in my life because it's a part of how I celebrate or grieve or whatever it is. Right. But you're mm -hmm. yearning for this healthy relationship yes. and, and connection with it. And I, mm -hmm. oh, I, not only is it an individual journey, but it's this exploration, right? Mm -hmm. It's this totally, it's this becoming curious about our own body and understanding that that changes over time. Like for me, 2016, 2000, and most of 2017, I was able to take these beautiful breaks from, from alcohol. And most, most people listening know that when, when I deliver the 30 days to thriving three to four times out of the year, I'll, I'll take that same break with the group. Mm -hmm. And I just noticed after my book launch, I was celebrating so much that mm -hmm. I was not interested in those breaks. And I was mm -hmm. conscious of it this time. Mm hmm. But there's right there's this cut like I'm 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 what 2015 was three years ago mm -hmm. that I started that so I went a two full years Man. and I'm still learning so it's yes. really it's like we all need to be gentle with ourselves and understand that mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. unfolding our best selves every day and that and totally. we're learning about ourselves mm -hmm. every day and it's. Yes. Yeah, so true. Everything you say, I, I just want to soak it in. <laughs> I literally have, I have this very creative friend, Nicole, and she has always brought these amazing ideas. And years and years ago, probably 10, 12 years ago, she was like, Oh, someday it'd be fun to custom make little dolls for every person that represent them. And she's like, yours would have red lipstick and a glass of red wine in her hand. And that's me. People see me. I wear colorful yes. clothes. I wear bright red lipstick or some bright lipstick. And I love red wine. And I love, I, you've, I've got a, got a glass of that in my hand. So retraining myself to not own that forever, you know, yes. that was a stage in my life, but pretty soon, maybe I'll be a doll with a glass of herbal tea in her hand and some running pants on, you know, yes. like, <laughs> I can make change. I can make these changes. Well, and I'm going to. Yeah. And I'm going to take it even a step further. It's your identity, mm -hmm. right? You're changing your identity because that's how mm -hmm. people see you. It's, it's how you identify. Mm -hmm. Like, like for, for me, I, anyone who knew me before I gave up alcohol would have been like, Oh, could you go get him, girl. Right? Good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good luck with that. Like the, like the fake. <laughs> pat on the back, like, go yeah. get him, tiger. Uh, we got totally. your back. Um, because it would have, because it was such a big part of my identi identity and how I showed up in the world, but also how I related and socialized mm -hmm. with people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here's a great example. Like some of my heaviest partying days, I'm going to give a shout out to my San Francisco crew. I love you crazy ladies. <laughs> and they all know me like they they knew like that was the height of my uh, partying. Like I played hard. I worked hard. And I repeat, rinsed and repeat every yes. day. Um, and so during this time when I gave up alcohol, they were all so lovely and supportive when I shared it mm -hmm. with them. And nobody, no, none of them were like, oh yeah, go get them. They might have yeah. been secretly. <laughs> on the inside, yeah. Right, on the inside, but they didn't say that to me. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess that's the story I'm telling myself is that that's what they thought. But mm -hmm. 
one of the gang got married um, at this beautiful destination wedding in Cape Cod. And oh, that man. was that was about halfway through the period. And that was for me probably the most challenging yes. time because oh it was because I don't see them that often. But it was also the most beautiful time mm-hmm. because wow. I had changed my identity so much mm-hmm. by that point and how I was relating with people that I got to experience them differently wow. be- because I was different. Yeah. Um, and I got to see beyond the partying and the laughs that we had together. And, mm-hmm. it, you know, alcohol is just, it's, there's, it's such a veil. Yes. And, and when that's stripped away for a long period of time and you start to relate differently because you because you're forced to because you're not mm-hmm. just going out for drinks with people right. and having your connections here. And mm-hmm. I, I, for those of you listening, I'm kind of like putting my hands at eye level, but you're like sinking deep because now mm-hmm. you you want genuine connection. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to know you. I want to know your soul. Mm-hmm. I, and and so if, I don't know if they noticed it, but I noticed I was showing up oh, differently um, in, in yeah. those moments. So it was really beautiful to have that. Kudos to you. That's probably going forward going to be my biggest challenge is feeling not feeling deprived and yeah so I definitely struggle with being one who compares I've done it my whole life um and I don't want to be somebody who compares so some of your mind zoning exercises around it's easy to say no it's easy to say no thank you it's easy to have sparkling water those sorts of things have been very helpful but i know i can see myself at a wedding or a party and everybody else is drinking in the summer having the cold chardonnay or the margaritas and i don't want to be pissed off like i always have but i don't get to have this it right. sucks you know so if you have tips for us other oh, yes. than keep going cuz <laughs> i i need them please lay them I on i love it i love it Okay, so the first big tip related to that, and this is where I do my reframing exercise, right? So whatever negative thought that we have, completely turn it around on a dime into a positive, whether you believe it or not today, your brain takes that as truth. And if you repeat that, you will start to embrace that as the truth and then connect emotion to it. So in that instance, right, I would say it is easy for me to feel abundant and connected and getting everything I want sober. Mm, good. It is so, okay. it is so, Can I, I should just tattoo that on my forearm totally, right now. <laughs> right? We both should. We'll get those temp tattoos. It says, yes, but totally. Yeah. And I, I can't remember if I told you this story, but when I, back in this fall, so just a couple months ago when I was like, I'm like, oh yeah, my, my patterns going back to a place that I didn't want it to, I was able to tap into my own toolbox and say, I'm going to give myself a mind zoning mantra. And that's when I just told myself, it's easy to be sober. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, every time I say it, it makes me take a deep breath. It's easy for me to be sober. And mm-hmm. then what I invite people to do is imagine what would it feel like if you believe that 100%? Mm-hmm. What if you yeah. believed that it's so easy, powerful, right? What if you believe, yeah. what does it feel like? Cause we can <laughs> all imagine we're all creative, beautiful beings. What does mm. it feel like to say it's easy for me to be sober? And how would you feel in that moment? If you really believe that truly and holy, mm-hmm. then take that emotion and imagine that saturating every wow. cell of your body. Mm-hmm. You keep doing that. And man, I will tell you, it was only two weeks later. I said to my husband, AJ, let's give up drinking for six months. He said, okay. So impressive. Oh, so, so good. I have a question easy. for you. Yes. Oh, and I don't want to interrupt because well, you might have other ideas. Well, so I'll come back ra- to my yeah, question. So let me yeah. wrap that piece up with what, again, whatever anyone out there is thinking is the obstacle. Take that thought and completely 180 it. So it's easy for me to go to weddings and feel joyful and abundant, sober. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Add, add that sober piece on there because that's yes. the key. The other thing is to give yourself grace and gentleness 
because whenever I talk about, it's fascinating. And I don't know how I came to this, if it was just, maybe it was someone else's idea. I told whoever it was, I give you credit for it. I just can't remember who it is. But I started to see that the five stages of grief completely fit with making a lifestyle change. Whether that's giving up smoking, whether that's giving up codependent relationships, whether that's eating healthy, moving, community connection, letting go of your old lifestyle is exactly like um, the five stages of grief. So that anger that you're feeling, right? That that comes Mm -hmm. from the deprivation. Like, why do they get to do it? And I don't get to. Totally. Same same thing when we lose someone. Like, why, yes. why did they die? Why is this happening to mm-hmm. me? This anger about or blaming them. Like, how could you leave me? I tend to get stuck there. I get so angry. And then I know that doesn't do good things within my body. I can feel the cortisol pumping through yeah. my body. <laughs> Seriously. Like, that's how I'd feel getting on the scale every day when I was doing everything right. And it wasn't freaking moving. Yes. I would just want to punch my fist through a window. And I'm such like a nice, easygoing person <laughs> that, but I get angry. Yes. That's where I tend to get stuck. So and it's not so good. In, so in that case, like, as you're in that negative moment, right, you're only yes. re- reinforcing that in your mind. And that's, yes. that's the blueprint you're carrying out. So in that moment, you could look at that and say, there is an opportunity for me to learn in this moment. And I embrace the lesson that my body is giving me. Oh my God. <laughs> that would be life changing if I could get there for right? sure. You No. Can you repeat that? No. <laughs> it's life changing because you're getting there. I am getting there. Right? I am on the path. You I am are. getting there. You so yes. are. You're here yes. today. You're talking Yay. to me. So yes. So that is... I accept the lesson that my body is giving me today on my journey. Okay. And that's I, a good one. Again, you I'm going to tattoo that on the other arm. Yeah, get that <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> and don't, yeah. And, and just remember, and everyone listening, it's okay if you don't believe it right away. Mm-hmm. But imagine what it would feel like if you mm-hmm. did believe it. Mm-hmm. And then soak that into every cell of your body. Okay. Mm-hmm. You had another, you had a question. I hope you didn't forget. Oh, I didn't. I wanted to know what it was like for you having that first glass of wine after a year. Okay, I'm trying. See, this is this is a great example. It's really not that big of a deal after a year, right? Because I can't. I'm trying to think where we were. I almost want to say it was champagne. I can't believe Ooh, good I choice. Right. Good choice. Um, the interest. So you didn't do it like when the clock hit midnight, you weren't jonesing like that. No, because here's what was really interesting. And, and this goes back to my San Francisco crew. They might not know this. I actually didn't give up alcohol until the 12th of January in 2015, because I had a trip already planned with my SF friends. Okay. And I wanted one last big hurrah with that. Of course. So like in hindsight, I'm like, Oh God. It's like saying I'll do it on Monday. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's a futile, useless um, Mm -hmm. statement. Because there's always get-togethers. Always There's always something. But for me, that felt authentic to setting me up for success. So I do want to honor that for anyone listening. So it wasn't really until I think the third, yeah, the 13th of January. So the the whole New Year's celebration had already gone by. Um, I honestly don't remember. Good. Um, so yeah, it, was, it, it, it wasn't be. that amazing. No, it didn't I mean, stop your world from spinning around. No, but but I can say like the sense that I'm remembering was that I had control. Absolutely, and I had a my life year, back. Going a year, yeah. a year is a long time break for somebody who loves her wine yeah. like I do. That is. <laughs> I remember hearing you say, trust me, listen to me, listeners. If I can do it, you can too. Oh. And I remember thinking, nope, nope, she doesn't know me. But the more I talk to you, the more You're I connect like, with oh, you. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not going to go that far. I'm going a month, but yeah. Yeah. we'll see. Maybe in a year, I'll be on again on a year long break. Who That's knows? That's exactly it. You're going to progress on your journey the way that exactly the way that you are meant to. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I do say that. And, you know, I, the other thing that was really helpful 
to me uh, and giving up alcohol that really hit home was, you know, people say, oh, you've been through so many more challenging things than giving up booze for a year. Mm-hmm. And it just like hits you like a ton of bricks when we look at our struggles <sighs> and our traumas. Yeah. When we look at what we have survived, not only survived, but prevailed and learned from, then it's easy to say, yeah, I can give up alcohol for a year. That's a drop in the bucket compared to living with a mother severely bipolar for 18 years, like in the home. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So (laughs) so when you have perspective... Yes. You can start to say, it's easy for me to give up alcohol for a year. Yesterday, (laughs) yesterday, my friend Angie and I were on the treadmill and we're working up to doing a 5k and we're, we jogged a mile without stopping, which isn't a huge feat, but for us, it's a good good start. It's so huge. (laughs) So I kept looking at her and she has like, this is so easy. And she's like, yeah, it's easy. And then I also have read smile, like smile while you're wanting to die on the treadmill (laughs) smile. It makes it better. But, um, Oh my goodness. I totally lost my train of thought. Ah. There's harder things than running. Yeah, yes. yes. We both said to ourselves, we both had babies, <laughs> no <laughs> drugs. We we're like, we, if we can have a child <laughs> without any pain medication, we can run a mile for Pete's sake. So yes. you're right. Perspective. And boy, I've been through a horribly devastating divorce. I've been through lots of infertility struggles. I've been through lots of pain, fam- just traumatic stuff growing up. And so I've been through a lot and I will get down, but I will always get back up. Yeah. So if I can tackle those things, I should be able to tackle this too, right? I feel like it's the vestige. It's like the thing that's holding on. And it's also in large part because of all those things, you know, Absolutely. that I find myself here. Absolutely. But I know I'm going to get a hold over it and it's just really exciting. And oh my gosh. So it, I'm going to catch two things. So I'm trained to hear, right? I'm trained to pick up. And when you said I should be able to do this, you yeah. absolutely are able to do this. You yes. absolutely are. And then you said, you know, you had that strength phrase at the end just there. And I love that. Like, mm-hmm. whatever we tell ourselves is the absolute truth. And mm-hmm. so when I hear shoulda, coulda, woulda, like that's either out there, or <sighs> it's out of my control, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's just a really beautiful reminder that no, you have everything that you need available to you to make that change. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Exactly the right time that's right for you. And especially I have loved the Fitlandia support I get in that community, in that tribe. I mean, I'm I'm gearing up <laughs> to be like over posting and over sharing, which is totally my style. But because I'm... <laughs> Once my protocol is finished for after the month, I can eat more in line with yeah, this, with the, the community. Yeah. So I will be posting all my meals and ideas and inspiration. And it's yeah. just great. Having support like that is invaluable well, let's from talk, people who get it. Yes. And so let's talk about that for a moment, because that's really, as you know, there's the four, I always talk about the four cornerstones of Fitlandia and why I'm so like, these are the keys to unlocking making a lifestyle change. Yes. And that's good nutrition, daily movement, positive thinking and community connection. Like in all my research and understanding my own body and cracking my own code and looking Mm -hmm. at all of the statistics and the things that help people be successful and the things that derail them. This is what I came up with. And of course, Mm -hmm. at the foundation of all that is the mind zoning, whether it's guided meditations or the mantras that we give ourselves. Mm -hmm. But that's like that positive thinking, right? Mm -hmm. But you're talking about this community connection. And I I really want to take a moment to talk to really kind of unfold this a little bit more. Because the group that's in there right now, starting off in 2018, um, is really powerful. So for those of you listening, there are two ways to get into a Fitlandia community. The first one is if you go to Facebook and you just put in a search for groups and put in Fitlandia and then click on the groups button, you'll find our closed Facebook group that is open to anyone. Just come in. We're there to welcome you and accept you. It's a super positive, inclusive, supportive group. 
for those of you that are really wanting to take your health and wellness to the next level and you sign up for the 30 Days to Thriving program, you get lifetime access to the secret Facebook group, which is what uh, Kate and I are talking about right now, mm-hmm. because then we're, we're in there posting all the time, our recipes, a picture of our food, because mm-hmm. that community connection is so powerful mm-hmm. and you nailed it. It's with people that understand they have the same challenges. They mm-hmm. have the same opportunities, but they also have the same perspective, which is what I love about Fitlandia and the people that end up there. They're all positive. They're all looking at it like there is a solution to every problem. I might mm-hmm. not have the solution, but I know my tribe has some mm-hmm. ideas for me to get through it. Absolutely. Um, so I love that you're connecting with it. I love that you're in there. So good. And yeah. I, just, I just have to like give another shout out to uh, Beth, who is in the community. Beth is in her mid 60s and she posted up a video of her on her bicycle for the first time in 15 to 20 years. Yes. And I will tell you, right. And I know you can, you felt this too, Kate. Like if that doesn't inspire you mm-hmm. to be so I'm getting chills just yes. like remembering yes. the video. If that doesn't inspire you to make the very most out of this present day, these opportunities mm-hmm. that we have and the courage that mm-hmm. our fellow Fitlandians have to keep moving forward. I just thought mm-hmm. that was so badass. <laughs> so amazing. So it's, I literally wanted to reach through and just like do a cartwheel and <laughs> give her a huge hug. It was so exciting. It's, it's vibrancy. And I feel yes. like just kind of going back one thing that wine or alcohol strips for me is the vibrancy that I tend to feel when I'm so much more clear headed. So yep. that her on the bike, that was vibrant and it was amazing and inspiring (laughs) for sure. It was so vibrant. And you're right. Like when you're under the constant veil of alcohol, you can't feel that fully. Mm -hmm. And I even think like your hopes and dreams and your creativity, it's all kind of like fogged over. It's like, Mm -hmm. it's like the opaque setting on a, on a, on a, or a transparency setting on a, on a picture like it's not Mm -hmm. in its full most vibrant vivid Mm -hmm. form totally it's a yeah a filter a foggy filter (laughs) yeah oh my goodness so what I love about having you on the show is doing um coming in as one of our stories of transformation is you are literally a well we're all a story in our own transformation we're always constantly evolving But talk about where you are in this present day, your challenges, your hopes, your dreams, everything that someone else might be able to relate to. Well, I made a whole list of things I would do. In fact, I'm looking at it right here. Instead of a glass of wine, everything from take a magnesium bath, hot tea, update my vision board, listen to music, burpees, do a plank, all that. I haven't yet had to go to it because I just haven't struggled. I'm so happy. I feel like I'm skipping around and I, there's 2017, as I mentioned, (laughs) there's just so like three or four really big bad things that happened to us. And I'm so excited to finally show myself that I can get free from this grip that that I've let alcohol have on me and start of a new year. Um, our family is complete. So I'm moving forward knowing that all that BS is behind me and okay, this is the family I have be positive. Um, and for some reason I haven't really struggled yet, except let me take that back. One of my good friends had me over for the golden globes Uh and we sat and watched that. And towards the end, she and her husband and brother-in-law opened a bottle of wine and they were drinking this delicious and they are, they know the good alcohol and they had a a nice, big, nice red bottle of wine. And I just kept saying, no, thank you. It's fine. And my good friend was like, Oh, do you care if I have a glass? And I was like, no, of course not. I can do this. But that was probably the most challenging just because I felt the deprivation. But um, other than that, it's been, eerily easy. And I think it's because I have the four posts in play in my life right now. And I don't think I've had that before. And, but when it does get really tricky, 
I'm going to call you or yes. post on Fitlandia or look at this list. Also, my why is my little amazing boy who you got to meet, little Jack. Yes. It's, he's, he, so I want to be... I want to be a vibrant mom. I don't want to be depressed and anxious. And I mean, I fight those things. I will always fight those things. But clearing my mind and just clearing the alcohol lets me be vibrant and colorful and excited. And I'm playing Nerf with him and running around. And I'm not like waiting for him to go to bed so I can go to sleep yeah. because I'm so depressed, you know? Yeah. Um, so right now I'm, I'm on a high. I, I really, for the first time I can see myself 20 pounds lighter. I can, Yay! I can, it's going to happen. I can see myself thriving in my friendships and my, my motivation and building a new real estate business. You know, I, I'm transitioning from being a professional photographer for 13 years to, um, continuing the trajectory on my real estate field, which I love, but I'm so much more motivated so I can see myself reaching my goals. And it's so much easier when I don't have the effects of alcohol hanging over me. Yeah. So you just gave two amazing tips, um, which is create a list. And I'm going to, I'm going to steal this from you because I love this idea. Create a list of choices. Mm -hmm. So when you're in that moment of struggle, what can you do to feel better? I always say breath work and movement, but you've, you actually outlined some really beautiful things, mm -hmm. which I love the vision board idea. Mm -hmm. Burpees, like something that's really mm -hmm. going to get your heart rate up fast. The, op the opposite of sitting my ass on the couch, drinking a glass exactly. of wine is doing a burpee or three or four flights up my stairs. <laughs> yeah. Or a nice, gentle warm bath with mm -hmm. yeah d that's oh. just this act of self-care like i love on the list it says listen to fitlandia podcast ah! so i just <laughs> didn't, i didn't even know that was on there until just i hadn't remembered it was on there and, there's so many things yeah and my soul sister gives a plug for the fitlandia podcast that's right it's my favorite <laughs> the first time i listened to it i thought oh my gosh i'm gonna meet that woman and we're gonna be friends like i just oh. i don't know but i didn't think it would happen so quickly I nor know. did i ever think i'd be a guest so oh my gosh yeah as soon as we met i'm like you have to be on the show so and yeah so you're why and the list. I love those, those two techniques. And those are two things that I, I, um, well, your why is always one that I talk about, but for those of you that are thinking about embarking on going sober for a period of time, write out a pros and cons list, write out everything that you think you would possibly gain in your life from giving up alcohol for whatever period of time that you imagine. This was a, this was, um, literally the last straw to push me over the edge to give up alcohol for a year because I listed out 32 things I thought would improve, improve in my life. Um, probably a mix of, uh, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Um, and then in my cons list, there were only five things. Mm -hmm. Like when you visualize, you think 32 things in your life can totally. get better and yeah. you're only afraid of five things mm -hmm. well that was it that was mm -hmm. it for me so know your why because you'll come back to it every time when it's hard make out that mm -hmm. list as Kate said of all the options of things you could do in that moment when you're challenged and then come up with your pros and cons list that will push you over the edge to make a lifestyle change p.s think of the money and the calories we've saved. <laughs> Come on, right there. Like those are two things think that I'm our, really motivated by. <laughs> right. And think of our spirit that we've preserved, that vibrancy Gosh. that we get to show up in the world. That should be number one. And when I it get to my, my practical, one. it is number one. It is, <laughs> it is number one. Yes. And the calories and the money, those are quick number two and three. Yep, yep. <laughs> Amen, sister. Kate, thank you so much. Oh. on the show for you and I having this totally open conversation to hopefully inspire others. If you're listening, come join the closed Facebook group. Just ask, just request to join. I can't wait to welcome you in. We'll give you a super warm welcome. Your tribe is waiting for you. And certainly for those of you 
that are looking for support. I run the 30 Days to Thriving program eight times a year. So whenever you're listening to this, you can hop into the next one and register um, as the date that this will be released. Our next one starts on February 1st. And the really cool thing about that is the weekly coaching calls will be at 12 p.m. noon. So Mm. you can get a nice lunch break and have your evenings free while still getting on a group coaching call. And if for whatever reason that doesn't work for your schedule, we record every single one of them and uh, so that the playbacks are available to you. So check it out. Check out the program. It comes with food guides and a mind zoning audio bundle. And plus you will get lifetime access to the secret Facebook group where you can come hang out with me and Kate every day. (laughs) Come on in. You'll love it here. (laughs) I love you. Thank you so much, Krista. I love you too. You're such an inspiration to so many people. Thank you. Thank you. You are equally an inspiration and it's been an honor to have you on the show. Oh, I can't wait to have lunch at Garden Bar soon. Right? Amen. (laughs) All right. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Krista. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. If this was your first time with us, be sure to head over to iTunes and give us an honest rating and review. I personally love hearing the key takeaways that you got from each episode that's going to keep you moving forward on your fitness journey. And if you're curious to know more about Fitlandia and the solutions we offer, visit fitlandiafitness.com today and sign up for our newsletter to unlock your free gift. I can't wait to welcome you to Fitlandia.